Lucius Malfoy was a pureblood wizard, husband of Narcissa Black and father of Draco Malfoy. He was educated at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Lucius was an aristocratic wizard and patriarch of the Malfoy family, who believed strongly in notions of blood purity, the superiority of pureblood wizards and wealth. He later joined the Death Eaters after graduation, who also shared his views on blood purity, and he participated in the first Wizarding War. This is the life of Lucius Malfoy. Lucius was born in 1954 to a Malfoy and into the very old, wealthy and gentry Malfoy wizarding family. He was raised in the lap of luxury at the family estate, a magnificent mansion in Wiltshire which had been in the family's possession for many centuries. His mother however is not mentioned throughout the books so it could be possible that she died during childbirth or shortly after Lucius was born. The other possibility is that women are not mentioned in the Malfoy family line as displayed here on Pottermore in the Malfoy family tree, just keeping it male orientated. In 1965, at the age of 11, he began attending Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, where he was sorted into Slytherin House, where numerous like-minded young students shared his beliefs. During his schooling days, his skills and potions were very impressive, excelling beyond his class, earning him the recognition of the school's potions master, Professor Horace Slughorn, the head of Slytherin House. Lucius was invited to the Slug Club, a group of promising young students that Horace wished to make good acquaintance with in order to gain favour from them in their later success. In his fifth year, Lucius was made a prefect, which not only showed the hard work he put into appearing a model student in the eyes of his teachers, but the fact that he academically excelled in school also. He warmly welcomed Severus Snape into the fold after the latter's sorting in 1971. Even though Lucius will be graduating the next year, he seen young Snape's potential and they would later become close friends. Lucius graduated Hogwarts in 1972, but being independently wealthy, had no need to seek employment. He then married Narcissa Black from the prestigious House of Black, another wizarding family that shared the same purple beliefs as the Malfoys. The couple had one child, Draco. He was born some years later in 1980. With the rumours of the Dark Lord beginning to surface, Lucius became one of Lord Voldemort's original Death Eaters and helped wage the First Wizarding War in an attempt to bring down the Ministry of Magic. He rose to second in command, even ahead of Bellatrix Lestrange. Some of his early activities may have been the torturing of Muggles in order to help spread the fear of the things that were about to change, and more importantly, the things that were about to come. It may have been around this time that Lucius was entrusted with the Dark Lord's old school diary, a horcrux, which was enchanted so that whenever smuggled into Hogwarts castle, it would bewitch the holder into reopening the legendary Chamber of Secrets and send the basilisk living inside to finish Salazar Slytherin's goal of cleansing the school of all Muggle-born students, thus proving that Voldemort was Slytherin's true heir. With the unexpected fall of his master in 1981 due to the rebounding of the killing curse, Lucius attempted to take command of the Dark Lord's army and mount a challenge to overthrow the ministry himself. However, nearly half of the army had fled and the rest were captured. Eventually, Lucius himself was caught and put on trial before a full wizen gamut. Lucius pleaded his innocence and claimed he had been acting under the influence of the Imperious Curse. While he was able to avoid the fate of many of his former peers, most of which was sentenced to a lifelong confinement in the wizarding prison of Azkaban. There were still some who believed his version of events, and yet again there were doubters who felt Lucius truly was in Voldemort's inner circle. Lucius settled afterwards. He lived a rather good life with his family, independently wealthy, and therefore without any need to work, he was more than content with a quiet life. Although still strongly upholding his pure blood beliefs and maintaining his influence in the Ministry of Magic, and he also maintained a collection of dark artefacts. Lucius eventually went on to raise his son Draco in an atmosphere of regret that the Dark Lord had not succeeded in taking command of the wizarding community. He did not search for Voldemort after his sudden disappearance, believing him to have died that night in Godric's Hollow. Malfoy was someone who believed in the cause rather than the man leading it, further supporting his lack of interest in finding a man who was now too weak to lead, as shown by how he still associated with his former Death Eater colleagues who, like him, avoided Azkaban, many of which became close friends of the family also. Even their children had become very good friends. Lucius was enjoying his position of power, 
He realised after time that he was perhaps too hasty to be involved in the extremism of Voldemort's reign. Although the cause was just, the methods were not. The most prominent evidence for his initial disinterest in revisiting his past and lack of faithfulness to the Dark Lord himself was how he completely disregarded rumours of Lord Voldemort's survival as wishful thinking and instead took interest in potentially allying himself with the very person who had brought about their former master's downfall. Many different theories and speculation regarding how young Harry Potter had survived the Dark Lord's attack were made over the years, the most persistent of them being that the boy himself was the next great dark wizard destined to surpass Voldemort for power. This assumption was one Lucius prescribed to most eagerly, even taking comfort in the thought that he one day might get a second chance of world domination if Harry Potter grew up to become another, greater, pro-pureblood leader. As many years passed without major incident, the time of Draco's magical education grew ever closer. Lucius informed Narcissa that it was his intention for their son to attend Durmstrang Institute, where Igor Karkaroff was now headmaster. He had kept in touch with his former Death Eater comrade and knew that Draco would be given preferential treatment. In addition to this, the school did not allow Muggleborns to attend, and it was also argued that Durmstrang took a far more sensible line about the Dark Arts than Hogwarts. Not only were the students taught defence against the Dark Arts, but they were also educated in Dark Arts offence too. Malfoy also despised Albus Dumbledore, Hogwarts headmaster, for his participation in the war and his campaigning for Muggleborn rights. Narcissa, on the other hand, a devoted mother, did not like the idea of Draco going to school so far away. Thus, they decided that he would go to Hogwarts after all, much to her husband's dismay. With the intention of influencing the day-to-day -day running of Hogwarts and to undermine Dumbledore's authority, Malfoy joined the Hogwarts Board of Governors. As a governor, one of his first acts was submitting a demand to the headmaster to have the Fountain of the Fair Fortune banned from the Hogwarts Library, as it depicted a love between a witch and a muggle. Malfoy claimed that he did not want his son Draco to be influenced into sullying his pure blood by reading a story that promoted marriage between wizards and muggles. He also asked for works stating that pure blood families maintained their so called purity by disowning, banishing, or lying about muggles and muggleborns in their family trees to be banned also. Dumbledore considered it illogical and immoral to remove works dealing with the mixture of wizard blood and muggle blood for the knowledge of the students. Backed by the other governors, Lucy's requests were denied. Dumbledore's response prompted several further letters from Lucius, consisting of opprobrious remarks on Dumbledore's sanity, parentage and hygiene. This also marked the beginning of Malfoy's long campaign to have him removed from the post of Headmaster of Hogwarts. Over the summer of 1992, Arthur Weasley began conducting raids on several wizarding households to confiscate dark or illegally enchanted objects under his recently proposed Muggle Protection Act. Before his home could be raided, Lucius sold several of his more incriminating possessions at Borgen and Burks and began to set in motion the old task that Voldemort assigned him, which involved reopening the Chamber of Secrets. Lucius still had Tom Riddle's diary in his possession, therefore he could still make excellent use of it by not only purging Hogwarts of Muggleborns, but also by sabotaging Weasley's reputation, eliminating an incriminating dark artefact and hopefully even exploiting the forthcoming chaos to have Dumbledore removed from his position at the school. After planting the diary on Weasley's daughter Ginny, Students, animals and ghosts were systematically petrified by the basilisk that had possessed Ginny Weasley released as the diary's grip on her became gradually stronger. As planned, Lucius used the ensuing terror to influence the school's board of governors to discredit and vote to dismiss Albus Dumbledore as headmaster for his poor running of the school. Harry Potter, however, eventually destroyed the diary and the basilisk after following Ginny to the chamber. He proved her innocence and pointed an accusing finger at the true culprit, Lucius. Lucius challenged the boy to prove his claims, but Dumbledore, who had returned to Hogwarts at the request of the governors, stated that it would be impossible with the diary beyond repair. However, he warned Lucius not to sell any more of Voldemort's school things, as Arthur Weasley would likely trace them back to him. And, adding insults to injury, Harry, in gratitude to Dobby, managed to trick Lucius into setting Dobby free. He accomplished this by wrapping the diary in his own sock before handing it back to Lucius. Dobby then caught the sock after Lucius carelessly tossed it aside and thus, he was no longer forced into servitude of the Malfoy family. While his role in the opening of the Chamber of Secrets could not be successfully proven, 
Lucius was ultimately stripped of his title as a Hogwarts school governor for threats against his 11 other colleagues. Despite his sacking, he still maintained strong ties with the Ministry of Magic. Lucius attended the 1994 Quidditch World Cup with his family, sitting in the luxury box of Minister for Magic Cornelius Fudge, though he was disgusted that Arthur Weasley was there in the top box with his children, along with Harry Potter and Hermione Granger. Lucius and Arthur restrained themselves due to being in Fudge's presence. In the aftermath of the cup, Malfoy and some other former Death Eaters were involved in the torture and humiliation of the Muggle site manager of the stadium and his family, though it was not known at the time to the public and officials. He fled when the Dark Mark was launched into the sky. When Lord Voldemort rose again in the summer of 1995, Malfoy returned to him on his summons, claiming that he had done everything he could all along to find Voldemort and help him rise again. Voldemort believed that Malfoy had not truly renounced his old ways, but mildly doubted his loyalty because Malfoy had fled the Dark Mark at the World Cup. Even though Harry witnessed Malfoy's declaration of loyalty to Voldemort, almost nobody in the Ministry believed him and Malfoy continued maintaining strong ties to very high places in the Ministry, most prominently in the form of financial support, as has been in the past. With Lucius now back in the Dark Lord's inner circle, and with the failure of the previous attempts to obtain the prophecy, Voldemort successfully attempted to lure Harry to the Hall of Prophecies by planting a vision of his godfather, Sirius Black, being tortured in his mind. Lucius led the party of Death Eaters to retrieve the prophecy, but they were held off by Harry and his friends until the Order of the Phoenix arrived. The mission to retrieve the prophecy ultimately failed when Neville Longbottom, under the influence of a step dance course from Antonin Dolohov, accidentally broke the prophecy. Lucius was seen by a myriad of Ministry officials called by Albus Dumbledore to the scene. Now with irrefutable evidence pointing to his identity as a Death Eater, Lucius was promptly sent to Azkaban prison, as was the rest of the Death Eater squad, the sole exception being Bellatrix Lestrange, who escaped with Voldemort. After the events in the Department of Mysteries, Voldemort mainly blamed Lucius for the failure, as he was the commander of Voldemort's small task force. His failure at the Department of Mysteries combined with accidentally destroying part of Voldemort's soul with the diary of Tom Riddle, resulted in his loss of any standing with the Dark Lord. Some believed that he was safer in Azkaban rather than being free. Malfoy was sentenced to life imprisonment. In the summer of 1997, nearly a year after being imprisoned, Lucius and all the other incarcerated Death Eaters escaped Azkaban prison with the help of Voldemort, who never bothered to get him out after all that time. Voldemort was convinced to do so by Draco Malfoy's success in the plot to assassinate Albus Dumbledore. This was really a further attempt to punish Lucius as Voldemort really didn't believe that Draco would succeed and would thereby dispose of the boy and possibly the other Malfoys as well. The Malfoys were no longer held in high regard by the Dark Lord, who commandeered their home as his base of operations, and his favour fell on Bellatrix Lestrange, Lucius' sister-in-law, and Severus Snape, Lucius' former protege, since he killed Dumbledore. Voldemort openly mocked the family at a Death Eater meeting in the summer of 1997, taking Lucius' wand and deriding their relation to werewolf Remus Lupin through Narcissus' niece Nymphadora Tonks. Lucius had become little more than a servant. The Malfoys were desperate for a chance to be forgiven, and thus were excited when a group of snatchers led by Fenrir Greyback brought Harry Potter and his friends to the manor in the spring of 1998. Lucius pressed his reluctant and fearful son to identify Harry, however, Draco denied knowing who Harry was. He then argued with his sister-in-law about who would be the one to call Voldemort with their dark marks. But they held off when Bellatrix noticed Gryffindor's sword, which she had believed to be in her Gringotts fault. After Hermione lied about the sword being a copy and Griphook went along with her story, Bellatrix signalled Voldemort, but Dobby, the Malfoy's former house elf, came to the rescue of the prisoners. After their escape, the Malfoys and Bellatrix were severely punished by Voldemort and were confined to the manor. By the time of the Battle of Hogwarts, Lucius showed that he was more concerned with his son's safety rather than Voldemort's cause, begging to be permitted to find him when the fighting began. Narcissa lied directly to Voldemort for Harry's sake when he informed her that Draco was still alive, and she and Lucius ran through the crowd. He was present for Harry Potter's final defeat of Lord Voldemort. Following Voldemort's defeat, Lucius, Narcissa and Draco sat in the Great Hall during the celebrations, looking unsure that they belonged there. None of them served time in Azkaban due to the evidence he provided against fellow Death Eaters and his help to ensure the capture of many of Voldemort's followers who had fled into hiding. Lucius would eventually gain a grandson, Scorpius Malfoy, after Draco married Astoria Greengrass. Because of Astoria's change of view regarding blood purity after the war, Lucius and Narcissa found her to be a somewhat disappointing daughter-in-law despite her pure blood heritage. In his later years, 
Lucius still enjoyed collecting dark artifacts, particularly ones that no one else had. He and Theodore Knott created a prototype for a new time turner, having decided the ones created by the Ministry were unsuitable and, having been destroyed, unavailable. They found a way which would enable Lucius to travel back in time years, not minutes, as he had hoped. However, he never used it, which led Draco to believe that his father actually preferred a world without Voldemort, instead choosing a life of peace. And that is all for today's video everyone, I really hope you enjoyed, a lot of time and effort went into creating this video for you to watch today. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at insadeanj, and if you want to check out any of my other videos they're on the left hand side of the screen, my merchandise is the bottom right and my second channel is on the top right. Thanks again and have a great day.